<laughs> yeah. It's like the old thing, there is no person. It always shuts everyone up. <laughs> so, there is no person. Oh, well, I have no branch to stand on now. <laughs> if you really see, everything that's ever said is based on being a person. Yeah, really. Everything, everything that's ever said is based on being a person. So if you guys say there is no person, really, there's no more conversation. There's no conversation. Where can you go? It's a good move. A guy, Tony Parsons, used to run, he's, I don't know, he probably still does it. I saw him a long, long time ago. He doesn't come here anymore. But he would, people would get into their story and he says, there is no person. <laughs> I said, Jesus Christ, what a smart move. Cut off everything. <laughs> they don't get any room to move, yeah. But what I found in, afterwards, though, is there, what's going to be here, hearing there is no person, is a programmed person. <laughs> That's what a lot of messages were missing, I believe. They weren't taking into account the quickness of the mental state or the stubbornness of the mental reference that you're a someone. So even when you hear the message you're a no one, you hear it as a someone. Yeah. And a lot of times, then that someone can go to extreme lengths to try to become a no one as the someone. <laughs> so that's when I just, that's what happened with me. I saw that, you know, so that's, I, my shares were really a warning in the beginning when I went into the non-duality little world. I was just trying to warn them, you know, like a, a warning, the first video was to try to warn them, hey, this, this is what the mental state does. It hears the message that you're not that as that which you're not. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So it makes the message something very fast before your very eyes. It happens very quickly. Yeah, so therefore you start at an imaginary position. Yeah. So, I'm going to do that again because I like that. I should record that. All right, see if I can do it I, like rote. So yeah, yeah, you know, the directness of the message that you are no, no person just stops all language and, and, and progress or, or moving away from. It's just, it's like, it's like cutting the stump of the stump, so to speak, yeah? But see, the thing I found from when I was going to satsangs, watching my own head and then listening to other people share was that the feeling of being a someone is what catches the message of being a no one, yeah? So just like I use the example of the clone that's programmed to be a human, has irrefutable evidence in front of him that he's a clone, yeah? He can't dispute it, it is totally over, but how he's gonna feel like he's a clone is from the programming of being a human, yeah? It's going to be the human programming that's going to feel like it's a clone. So the message that there is no self, the selfing will hear it and then claim it, and then it will be hearing it framed as a self that it isn't one. And it can go to such extreme lengths that it will try to become a non-self as a self. So for it to become a non-self, it's got to be totally conceptual because that's the only thing the self understands, yeah? The self doesn't ever, cannot imagine its own lack of existence. The self thing is stubbornly, its logic is that you can't sit here and imagine not being here. I mean, that there is no body, nothing like that because it would still be the body imagining it, yeah? You see, it's very difficult to extract that one number. No matter how, how many times you subtract from it, the one number is what's following the subtraction, so to speak. Yeah? So it can get to negative zero, but there'll still be the sense of being a one there. That's the negative zero. Yeah? It's, it's watch the head. It's, it's what it does. So if you hear the message of you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. And then it gets, it gets caught. The first mitt that comes up here in time is the mental mitt. The reference is already in place that you're a self, a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. And there's a lot of investment in it. You've got tons of memories and stories 
and incredible convoluted excuses and rationales and blaming for situations, all rooted in that premise. The mental state isn't going to raise the white flag up very quickly. It won't. So it, it rises up and catches the message that it's a lion and goes, yeah, I really like that. But how it translates it is I can become like a lion. Yeah. So I saw one time I read an old, an old book from a teacher and uh, he was describing this one aspect of non-doership. Yeah, there is no doer. There's no individual volitional thing that's choosing doing these things. Yeah. And he went on a four page beautiful description of the impossibility of being a personal doer. And then it was over, and then the next paragraph, it said student, and then the student went, I really, I get it, I get what you say, what do I do now? You see? This is the stubbornness of the system. Yeah. It hears its total irrelevance, and it still tries to write its relevance into it. Yeah? This is what, we're, this is what happens. And people... Sometimes they sort of, their aperture opens up a little more, so they catch one of its first moves of that. But it has a number of them. It will keep on keeping on asserting that it's there, experiencing it's not being there. <laughs> it's tricky. You watch it. And so what happened with me is I went through about seven of those examples, and it went pretty, I thought, pretty far. Things were seemed like the aperture was getting wider and wider, but there was still the, the, the flag, the flag uh, placement in, oh, I'm getting wider and wider as what I wasn't, yeah? And then, but after about seven or eight examples, my head got the principle, there is no one. The mental state is going to keep claiming there's a someone experiencing its own absence, but there's no one experiencing its own absence. The experience is the absence of, is the, is the presence. The presence of what we're not is that. And it's not an experience, yeah? It's different. So you're not going to have an experience of what you are, but you'll sense a presence of what you are, yeah? The mental state takes that presence of what you are and tries to make it an experience it's having. That's how it tells it. That's how it translates it. So it knows it can't erase what's always so, so it basically claims it and makes it something else. So what's always so, which is not an experience, becomes an experience to what has never been so. Yeah. In its logic, in its translation, in its interpretation. So if you see, it's like that Monty Python skit that it wasn't we translate it totally different because I saw the whole skit and it, this isn't what it meant, but we took it for something else. And here's the skit. There's a, it's just like you can tell it's an English garden, you know, a park in England. And these people, they come out, the whole Monty Python people, with safari hats and khaki shorts and they look like they're on an African safari and it's gone bad. They have no food and no water and they're, they're we're going to die here, you know, as if they're in the savannah of, you know, Sudan. We're going to die here and they're going, oh, they're all getting crazy. And then they go, wait a minute, we're being filmed. And then suddenly the aperture opens up and there's this whole film crew with sandwiches and water. <laughs> and they, oh, and they come over and they give them a sandwich and water. And they're, oh, I, we've been saved. We've been saved. Thank you so much. And then they go, wait a minute, we're being filmed. And then there was another film crew filming the film crew and, the, and it could go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah? <laughs> You're never going to be behind the camera. This this, this is always going to appear in front of the camera. Yeah? It can never be what's behind the camera because it's a who. It's a thing, which it ain't. And therefore, the thing, the who, can never become a what. It's just recognizing maybe, just maybe, you're not the who that you're taking yourself to be. And maybe a little more or a whole lot of more what will come into your life. Yeah? but you're never going to have an experience of what's behind the camera. Yet it's going to infuse itself in all the experiences. Just like the simple statement of whatever can be, whatever is hearing can't be heard, yeah? Whatever seeing, what's seeing will never be seen. 
what's seen, everything that's ever passed these eyes, since these eyes seem to have been open for years, yeah? Every one of those things, not one of them can ever see what's seen, yeah? All the notes that ever went and all the people who thought they heard a note, those people, those bodies are never going to hear what's hearing, yeah? You're never going to be able to cognize or think about, of, of what's thinking because it's prior to thought, yeah? What's thinking, what's a, seeing the thoughts can never be thought about. This is a, this is, to me it's a very clear pointing. It just points to the fact that what we are isn't going to be experienced by what we're not, yeah? So you can give up that whole drive, anything that lends itself or promotes itself as an experience of the authentic oneness is baloney because the authentic oneness, if there was any authentic oneness, cannot be experienced by the false two-ness. Yeah. It's impossible. If we experience the authentic oneness, first of all, us experiencing it would immediately <laughs> disclaim that it could be the authentic oneness because there would have just been a demonstration of two-ness. I just had an experience of oneness. <laughs> that would be two, I would say. <laughs> oneness sort of excludes that possibility. How can it be included? Not in oneness, but in two-ness. Two-ness can say, I've had an authentic, I've had an experience of the authentic oneness. It says it all the time. People are talking about, I experience the oneness of everything. No fucking way. That would, that would go totally against the statement of oneness that you as a separate entity could experience it. That would be what? Two. Yeah? And you can't jam two-ness into oneness. You just realize there is no two-ness. Boom. And maybe something will occur to you. Yeah. I wouldn't even want to give it a name. Just find out. A name is like, the, is like the empty bag. You believe you have something, but when you open up, you have nothing. Yeah? But to find out, to find out has some weight. To find out is like tactile. To find out is like convincing, where you'll believe with certainty. And then a lot of the fucking miscellaneous mental stuff will be put to rest, you yeah? know? People are always attempting to swat all those mental moths, but if you remove the light bulb, they'd go. <laughs> They're only circling, circling around this false moon called us. That's, the mental states are being, the mental thoughts, all this stuff is being held by our gravitational pull as the thinker. A thought would just come and go just like every fucking thing else does. But we hold it and we call it my thought and then it starts orbiting around us in this giant asteroid belt of fucking thoughts. You know what I mean? And, you know, I hated that person and then a year later, I hate that person. It just comes, it just orbits around and then the same shit starts horizontally downloading in the day you think you're in. I thought I got rid of that resentment. No, oh, no. There's no getting rid of an imaginary asteroid belt. You're the one that's bringing it into life. You beckon it. Everything is just pregnantly a possibility. And we beckon it. We beckon it. It's like that cloud they talk about in the, in the computer stuff. There is no... There's not like a cloud the shape of Nebraska up somewhere in the sky, isn't there? It's a huge, supposedly a huge vault of information, but there's no vault. It's just information, yeah? It has to go through something to translate here to become seemingly something, doesn't it? It's just there, and you hit a little key, and then it downloads through the, through the system. This is like the computer, yeah? We hit the little key, and the key that opens up to this possibility, all these ideas and thoughts and, and memories and conditions, if you hit the key of Paul, there it comes. <laughs> Downloads through Paul, and then makes everything about Paul. Yeah? The thought is just like a Chevy pickup. What it carries is what's being injected into it. 
Yeah? Through the mind, through us being identified as the thinker, that's what's given it all the... See, the, the glue and the, stick, the sticky side's on our side. <laughs> the thoughts are just being used to facilitate the bondage of self. Yeah? The mental state is using thoughts to facilitate a bondage to an idea of being a body. And it's using feelings to facilitate the bondage of the, to this idea of being a body. How do you know? Feeling totally different. My feeling, much different. The weight's incredibly different. Thought has a little weight. My thought, much different. Where did the thought, did it, how, did the thought produce the extra weight? Or is it the my? Yeah? The my is where the weight's coming from. The thought is just that we do it all the time. Put money up there. Health up there. Relationships up there. Yeah? They all have meaning to whatever, wherever you're seeing it from. You know, from whatever the reference is, it's going to have some meaning. Okay. Now we weigh them, and everyone would weigh them. And maybe the biggest weight we'd have in this room would be eight ounces. Yeah? Some would have two ounces, others don't. Extreme weight would be eight ounces. You were really giving it a lot of meaning. Let's start at another number as the baseline. Two pounds. Money. My money. I wish every one of you to have tons of money but I don't want you to have any of my money. Money suddenly has a totally different meaning, doesn't it? When it's money, oh, fucking, I share the wealth, but none of my wealth. <laughs> That's what people say. You ever hear people at these meetings? Oh, all that shit I have doesn't mean anything. All right, kick down, bro. I've not seen one of them donate their fucking Mercedes. Not one. Never. Because it's, they have a story that they don't want it, but push come the shove, they want it. <laughs> yeah? It's the my. We're, we're ranting and raving about thoughts. Thoughts are being used. The, bur the heister, the burglar, hides amongst the thoughts. Because every time a thought is noted, there's a sense that you're the thinker of it, or it's about you or it's about your life, or your money, or your this. Literally, yeah. And all the weight, we believe it's coming upon us. I hate those fucking thoughts. Those thoughts are keeping me up all night. They're not keeping you up all night. It's the my that's keeping you up all night. The my says, I, don't, I shouldn't be having these thoughts. <laughs> but they keep on coming. And you go, so that, that powerlessness is a real fucking irritant rub. The self, which is very bellicose and always yelling out how great it is, is totally unbelievably irrelevant, and he doesn't like to have that pushed in its face. So it's in the, I, can't, I hate these thoughts, but the thoughts aren't stopping. It just keep on, you're up for four hours at night. People are getting used to it. There's a huge pharmaceutical business company whole giant industry that they're just producing sleep aids. I bet you they don't sell too many sleep aids to the aboriginals or to like the little pygmies in Africa or the people in the Amazon. They're probably going to sleep pretty damn well. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, but here, we're just under avalanches of going over, not thoughts, going over my thoughts, going over my problems, going over my feelings, going over my time, going over my, 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 and the my never gets addressed. We always put the finger on the problem, on the girlfriend, not the my, of the time, of the thoughts, of the feelings, yet the whole, the whole point of weight distribution is at the my, not at the, not at the feeling, the thought, the girlfriend, the time, the problem. It's the my problem, my girlfriend. You've seen, I've seen it. You have a, you're with a lovely lady and you're having a great time for months. And then one night she gets christened, she gets christened like a, a ship that they're gonna send on a journey. You know, they have the champagne. You christen her, my girlfriend. Then suddenly, you feel like you have a, an inherent right to, like, know where she is <laughs> when you're not together. 
<laughs> it just, just seems like natural. Why am I not knowing what she's doing? I have the fucking right. She's my girlfriend. <laughs> you know, I want to see her emails. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'd like to, I'm going to park in front of a house and make sure she's not lying to me. That wasn't happening when she was a girlfriend. It suddenly ch changes when she's christened my girlfriend, yeah? Now I'm up on stalking charges. <laughs> I was having so much fun and now I'm fucking getting arrested and they have like a 250 foot, you can't go near her anymore. What happened? She's my girlfriend. <laughs> I can, I can strangle my wife. <laughs> if it was any stranger, you would never fucking try it. But because it's my wife, fuck, I can strangle her. You don't see the weight? Why keep pointing the finger at, at, the, false, at the false culprit? It's the mental state is giving meaning to tons of things. You don't see it happening. So it's like the Course says, it projects all this and then you perceive it as a body, as if it's really that meaning. And yet it can be, it'll be shown to you over and over again that one moment, like Monday, this is a big freaking problem. The next Tuesday, it's not a problem. Wednesday, it's a problem again. What the hell is it? Is, is it that quickly changing from problem, not a problem? No, I'm giving it the meaning it has. The condition I seem to be in, we're not even close to what the real condition we're in. We seem that we believe we're in a condition, and that condition sees this as a fucking problem. If that condition changes, we don't see it as a problem. Next day, the condition seems to come back, we see it as a problem. Why do we keep pointing? It's that old thing, you're pointing it, and then the three point fingers pointing at you. Let's you know, use these three fingers. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Who, yeah, this one, am I? See what's, at least get an idea in the, even the people in recovery, it says you got to get down to the exact nature of the wrong. You know, you got to get down the causes and conditions. You can't just keep waffling around the consequential level. You're always going to think it's like the wedding, the wedding night, uh, penthouse when it's the hallway of shit and fans you're entering. You know what I mean? You're always going to think, oh, that's where I want to go. No, no, no. And then as soon as you're in, you, you, here comes the fans, the shit, you just fucking, and then you immediately give up all, all possibility that you're inherently okay. And now it's, oh, hey, I only had five pieces of shit hit me today. Fucking good. Jeez. And I got these wipes, sandy wipes. I can clean it so fast. Oh, that's fucking great. But you're still in the hallway of shit and fans. There must be a better, a, a better solution that, that's worth its definition of a solution. To me, that's not a solution. That's just managed damage control. So to... The real relief is prior to all this shit. I'm just humbly saying that the relief that we are, that doesn't come after the problem, doesn't come after the bondage, it's prior to it all. Yeah? The bondage has to be produced seemingly in time. Your, the relief that you are is timeless. It's prior, yeah? Good conditions and bad conditions are manufactured in time. Your inherent condition is prior to all that. Yeah? Being super clear and then being super confused is happens in time. What you are is neither of those aspects. You're prior. So we're always prior to the bondage. That's the solution. Everything else is managing, or it's, a, it's like a solution in, in a different, in a whole different dimension, like an Orwellian doublespeak. Solution doesn't really mean solution. It means a slight abatement of the problem, only to have more problem occurring quickly thereafter. That's not a solution. I would say that's the same aspect of being a problem. 
And to me, the problem is problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution. The problem is close, far, high, low, getting clear, being unclear. I was really close, now I'm far away. That to me is the problem. This splitness of interpretation that can only be addressed, not after it, because everything that addresses after it is also split. It's also based on you. It's prior to it. Whole mind is the solution to the seeming split mind effects. You're not going to find the solution to the split mind's effects in the split mind's effects. You're going to find it prior to it, which is whole mind. Yeah? Where the, hop, the, the unbroken, unsequential, unlinear, unconsequential, unconditional freedom that's always available at all times, right where you are, to me, that's the solution. That's worth its definition. Yeah? Because in that solution, there is no real problem. You get to see that everything here can only reach its maximum height of seemingly so. It can only appear to be so, and it needs us to believe it to appear to be so, because we're the only so-ness there is. We have to lend our reality to that to make it seem like it's real. That, play, that is not real, because if it was, it would always be real. It seems to be real, and if you follow it back, it's based on where you think you're at, and when, if something happens to where you think you're at, you can see right through it. Yeah? You'll see the falsehood of this whole place in a nanosecond. And yet, three hours later, you could be up the ass of self again and take everything as real as real can be. What's the one constant there? You. Yeah. The reality of the world isn't constant. It's based on you. The thickness, the substantiality of the world isn't thick or substantial. It's based on you. Yeah. You can travel heavy or light. So it's not the day that you seem to be traveling through that's heavy or light. You can travel heavy or light through any day. Yeah. People are in Hawaii at their vacation, and they're having a fucking heavy bad time. They're yelling at their wife, and they're disappointed, and, and all they're doing is thinking about work while they're in Hawaii. You would think, hey, that, that day's perfect. It should just, the natural appropriate response, if you were available, would be, oh, this is perfect. But no, the head will always override. You've seen it in your own life. I'd really just like to fucking have a good day today. How long does it last? 30 minutes, maybe? As soon as you walk out of your house and you're not, on, you're not controlling the control room and other things happen, someone gets ahead of you at the coffee place and fucking has one of those eight adjective drinks and you're like... All I want is, a, you know, it's, it's, it's all conditional. It's like, on very, it's like a thin thing of ice always, always threatening the crack underneath you. If you wouldn't let it really, you'd fall through into a big space, actually. So it's our huffing and puffing that makes it seem so. So if you stop giving your breath your belief, your faith to it, yeah? That faith, that breath will, give, will be given over to something else and maybe it'll be a lot more beneficial to you and others if that investment occurs. Now, you can't do that investment as one of, the, one of the aspects of the investment, the sense of self, but you can see that you're not the sense of self. You can see that you're not that. And then all the bank accounts get rearranged. Your interest and attention gets freed from a dead preoccupation and now may enrich your life. Yeah. Contentment breeds contentment. Satisfaction breeds satisfaction. Serenity breeds serenity. Peace breeds peace, yes. As you believe, so it is, truly.
in recovery, we always run into that a real fucking stickler called self can't get out of self. <laughs> it's just an unbelievable statement. Self can't get out of self. What six words? It can put a stop to so much stuff. If you see that what is identified as self cannot get out of the identification as self, <laughs> but what you are can see you're not that, and that's the experience of being out of self based on the fact that you were never in a self. It's not a, like a successful escape. The thing is, it's the wisdom of no escape. There's no need to escape at all. That's the successful escape. Yeah? The great struggle isn't a struggle. Like they say, it's an open secret or a gateless gate. It's always, they're always trying to imply it's right where you are with no requirement necessary to meet it. Meeting it is way past the point you are it. Yeah. Take a, you know, just entertain the ideas. That's what you've been doing coming here. That's what I do. This was like a vertical product that went through the horizontal plane. Didn't stop and get sucked into this time thing. It did for a while when I first was interested in spirit, quote unquote, spirituality. It was merely got funneled into time and practices and processes and years of purification and hours of meditating and tons of time standing or sitting or laying in a certain posture and following every freaking breath. But then this message came through all that, went right through the horizontal download, went into the innermost, and things were put to right, basically. The horse was put before the cart, blue was seen to be blue, red was bled, red was red, things became obvious that were very mystifying before, yeah? And then it was just so clear, the absurdity of a self trying to experience its own absence. It's so insane. <laughs> really, isn't that what's happening most days? It's self trying to get out of self. Self is, t is tired of itself. <laughs> it wants to get out of it. And it just cannot understand why it hasn't been successful. Why it has to sign up for a six-month retreat. Why couldn't a weekend do? I mean, maybe... You know what I mean? Even recovery, it says, third step, it says a simple statement. Make a decision to turn your willing life over to the care of higher power. Okay, that's it, thanks. It would be a three-step program. All right, I made the decision, it's all over. But no, it's not, you're not getting off the hook because your life is already co-opted by another power called alcoholism in our case. It's the same parasitical movement. But the parasitical movement has what you would call your will in life already, handily, handily contained. And it's, it's not going to give it over to any other power. Yeah, it's not going to give it over. So it's got to be sort of wrestled away, which is four through nine of the steps. And then it's still a persistent little parasite. So you have to keep doing or being involved in 10, 11, 12 to keep it at bay. Because if it, if it can't get in the front door, it comes around the back door. If it can't get through the side window, it goes to the skylight. It will just keep on attempting. Because why? It's a snake. It's a parasitical movement. It doesn't have a life. You are its option. You are its opportunity. You are living. Yeah? And it wants to have that. It wants to have the experience of that. And the only way it can experience it is through interpretation. It can only picture itself as a body yesterday and picture itself as a body in the future. So basically, it's constantly finding its own reflection in thoughts about nothing. That's what it's doing. It doesn't throw it or cast any shadow. It doesn't have any reflection. So it makes one up in memory. So you picture yourself as a body even a half hour ago, your head right now has a memory of you being in the bathroom as a body. This is what it's doing. It's very active, a lot. That's why there's 70,000 thoughts a day supposedly moving through the noggin. What person has a job that takes 70,000 thoughts to do? 
<laughs> I swear, I was a house painter, maybe 14 thoughts was all I fucking needed, really. After a while, after the habit was set, there was no, you know, what is this, a wall? I knew I could recognize wall, ceiling, pole, paint, brush, okay. Oh, where do I need to go to eat? All right, that's solved. All right, all right, let's just have spacious contentment the rest of the day, but no, 70,000 thoughts filtering through constantly, going, I, me, my, I, me, my, constantly. Please cast a reflection. See, it's like the moon that needs the sun to reflect, yeah? The selfing is like a moon that's trying to absorb the sun's rays, which are interest and attention. The whole mind's rays here are interest and attention. The self is placing itself to be the sun, but it's actually the action of a moon. It's trying to suck the light of the sun so that it can reflect and be seen as a moon. It needs to constantly, it can't let the light be noticed as just being the light. It has to only catch it and then start the story from the moon. So if you start the story from the moon, you're saying, hey, the moon is like a small sun. No, it ain't. It has no, it's not generating any light. The sun is. But it sort of, it seems to shine. In its, little, it's in its own little universe, which is a mental one. And that shine is the constant preoccupation, taking those lights of immediacy and distract, distracting them into time where they're reflecting the idea of you as a body all day. And the moon sucks that up and then it has a fucking reflection, uh, like a pale reflection. But when it blocks you off from the sunlight of the spirit, you'll take it to be the only light. Yes? You'll be relying like it, it's just a sun while it's a moon. All the while, we're that sun. We can see the moon. But what happens is the attention gets into the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon. The moon puts down like a black curtain, and now you see from the moon. And it can go, get so insane that you start searching for light from the, the moon's point of view when you're the source of all light. It's that insane. There is a solution. I believe this message brings us there because there's nowhere to be brought to. It's a fucking obvious, it's just more of a disarming. It's, this is all subterfuge for the sense of being totally on now to be, uh, become obvious. So you feel a presence when you come to the talk and da, 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 da. then you may think, I'm gonna go home and go over what he said and mine some shit out of it. That's, you don't need even to do that. It's already in there. You are the message. You are the light. Yeah. You just don't think so. And none of us think so. So if we're relying on thought, we're never going to think so. Even when we're thinking so, that's not being it. That's like the booby prize. <laughs> Seriously. People say, you know, oh, I don't think I'm doing well. Of course you don't. <laughs> <laughs> because, and then you say, I think I'm doing well. Of course you do. You can both. You're going to be stuck in both. You know, you'll be thinking you're close. You'll be thinking you're far. You'll be thinking you woke up and you'll be thinking you lost it. You'll be thinking you you really reached a high level and the next day you'll be thinking you're in depression. You're going to be thinking a lot of insane fucking shit. <laughs> you are. And if you believe the thoughts, they're going to produce an effect as if they were real. But it's our reality lent to them, lent to them by believing, by believing them that bites us in our own ass. They, it, does have, it does not have teeth. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's incessantly repeating itself, its mantra, but it doesn't make it so. You are always prior to it. You're never gonna lose this gunfight because it takes time for it to pull its gun out and we're in timelessness. If you are rooted or at least entertain the possibility of not being this action figure, then maybe, just maybe, you'll find an anchor in timelessness and it will give you immunity to all the processes of time. You'll start coming out of it. You'll stop coming out of this process of becoming and realize you is, yeah?
And if you have, don't, just keep coming here. We'll entertain it every week until I get a message not to do it anymore. And I'm not going to take no one coming as the message. I'll be here by myself and Ray every week. And we'll just have me and him. We'll go out and have coffee and we'll just put this stuff on the internet and it's going to get out there like a fucking blown seed. It's unstoppable. There's a lot more ground than just this area. We're going to have it blown everywhere. And it'll catch root. People start traveling later. Yeah, and there'll be a stop to all this shenanigans sooner or later. We'll feel a little bit better and we'll be useful to ourselves and others without trying to be useful. You know what I mean? You'll just be used all the time because that's actually the case. Something's taking you over all day. If you find that one flavor that seems so, so, honor it, you know. I'm sure if, if, you, be, if you beckon it, it will come through. And by coming through, you'll know the tree by its roots, yeah. Can't know the tree, but you'll have a sense of it by having it move through this, you know. So, yeah. Oh, here it is. We put your chair back there, bro. <laughs> I went around the whole day today with two different shoes on. <laughs> I went to the acupuncturist. I took them off, didn't notice at all. Then I was putting them back on after the session. I go, Jesus, I got two different shoes. And that one person saw it. And they, usually they say, hey, bro, you got two different shoes on. No, no one said a damn thing. I said, all right, and tomorrow I'm going to have my pants on backwards, see how far I can get. But everyone's so oblivious. It's incredible. <laughs> Seriously, we're so absorbed in what's not happening. You can fucking walk around here with your pants on fire. Hey, I may try that. <laughs> but it was funny, you know. I didn't know anything. It was just, what's next? You know? To check, do I have underwear on? No. Oh, no, no more underwear. Nothing's happening. Just maybe look at the sense of my. It's a very profound little, it's, it's, it's represented by such a small word, two-letter word, but what it represents is a huge mental activity, yeah, that's going disguised in, out in the open, you know. Even when people talk, they're constantly claiming to have stuff, they, to, to have to do with stuff they have nothing to do with. It's very difficult to believe that any resentment that you've ever had hasn't been yours. You know, every fear that you've ever felt hasn't been yours. Every heinous thing that you ever thought you did hasn't been yours. Yeah. If you follow what it says in recovery, being convinced that self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us, and now if you believe that, we'll look at some of its common manifestations. And then it says resentment is the number one killer of alcoholics. Yeah, it doesn't say my resentment. It says resentment. But how it kills an alcoholic is when it's yours. How fear drives you crazy is when it's your fear or about you. Yeah. When doing something, have, making, having a mistake when that can produce tons and tons of guilt and shame, it's not from the mistake, it's from my mistake. The my is the weight bearer. Your crimes, you'd be let off the hook if they weren't seen as your crimes. And AA gave it to me. I had the leap. It was so awesome. I was a year sober. Recovery. And they presented alcoholism to me the first year I was coming I understood certain aspects of it and this aspect of being a disease 
I felt like I understood. And the first step where it said, you know, we're powerless over alcohol and powerlessness is sort of like if you're dancing with a gorilla, you're going to stop when the gorilla wants to stop. Yeah? Powerless means you really don't have any say of what's going to go on. In coming out of seemingly you and towards you, yeah? All right. And that your life's unmanageable. And so I was doing, this, doing the deal, and I had my first fairy princess in AA. You know, I had feelings that I hadn't never had since I was young. I always used to be loaded, you know, feelings of wanting someone and loving someone. And... Um, I wanted, I was with her and my friend was with his girlfriend and we used to ride motorcycles and we pulled up to his place and we all four started going upstairs. We were going to just hang out at his, at his apartment. And as we were going up, a girl, an Asian woman came down with a pair of blue jeans on and she had all this paint on her pants. Yeah, so we said hello, we walked back into, we walked into his apartment. He went down to get something from his motorbike and came back in and said, oh, my neighbor would like to talk to you, and I thought he had told her that I was a house painter and I was going to give her advice of how to paint the room. So she walks into this room, and now I have my f best friend in AA, who I'd like to have think of as cool, you know, that drive. I have the, my girlfriend, who, you know, I want to impress her. This lady comes in and goes, Hello, Paul. And I go, What? She says, Yeah, don't you remember me? And I go, No. And she says, You owe me $500. And so my little proverbial pants fell down, you know, because my girlfriend's looking at me, what? And my friend's looking at me. But you know what? It didn't, the reaction was no guilt or shame. None, not all, not one reaction. Because I knew that what I did to her, which she was going to tell me, I would have done to anybody unless she could physically stop me. Yeah, I was clear on that. I was clear on the first step that I was powerless over alcohol. When I was under the influence, I was apt to do almost anything to anybody if I could, and I did. It was beautiful. One of the first times, because most of my guilt and shame was always about shit that was being made up. This was actually an event that she was presenting me, and it didn't kick in, yeah? I had a revelation that day, and revelations are to be built upon. They're like platforms. They're not meant to be worshipped. More additions are coming their way. Yeah? Allow that to become established as a platform, and then more and more can land in your life. Yeah. So you see, this whole idea of resentments and fears and thoughts, everyone is still chirping the party line. They're my thoughts, they're my feelings. And we're not seeing, it's not the abundance of thoughts, and it's not the degrees of feelings we're having, it's the my that precedes them. That's where the glue is. And that glue, that glue is not necessary. It's an addition. And we are playing the role of being the, the addition or the subtraction of it. It can go both ways. We're in the habit of going one way and being the addition and then trying to subtract it by doing things and getting away from things and learning skillful means. Or we can be the subtraction of that which produces a lot of ease and comfort and a sort of a relaxed awareness and fucking no vigilance whatsoever. <laughs> you're just, you're like a kid again. Yeah? Was, do you ever see a kid when they're young? They're, are they vigilant over their joy that's rushing through them right now? They're from, no, there's no fucking way. Yeah? They don't see it as a commodity that they could possibly lose because time hasn't set up yet. They're not thinking in the construct of time, which we do. And because we're ardent followers or, or having faith in time, we believe being okay is, some, is an event that's going to happen later. I will be okay. Instead of realizing this is always going to be okay, un okay, un okay, okay. But the okayness isn't found in trying to control and manage the conditions of the body, the emotions, the mental state. It's in the inherent condition that we are prior to all those states. And that's reliable because it's not of time. It's not being increased or decreased, added on to or subtracted from. It's not having additions or removals. It's inherently so. Yeah. And you can rest there just as easily as 
where we're trying to find rest is agitation. How could peace in time be truly peace? Because let's say you're resting in peace in time, your head is going to be saying, will I be resting tomorrow in the peace? There goes the peace. As soon as time is introduced, there is no peace. As soon as time is introduced to anything, it just becomes another condition that you seemingly are in now, only to be out of it later. But in timelessness, that's the peace that passeth all understanding. In timelessness. And we are of timelessness. Like Jesus says, we're in this world, but not of this world. This world is in time, and we are not of it. That's his idea. He doesn't say what we are. He's pointing to what we're not to get it, because that's the only way, really. So you see, what's in here? Time, things, this and that. And he's saying, you're not of that. So you're not a product of where you're trying to produce a condition. You are an unconditional state prior to this whole. Why not find a little of that? Let it allow it to come in through you. Why not become the bearer of what you're looking for? Maybe life will be turned around and then it will be seen as more as an opportunity to express, not to achieve and acquire and attain, but to express. So, yeah, that's that.